excited for the tour because of my fondness for the Appalachia and for the learning experience to come here and learn more about what I really see as an emerging Appalachia and my glass is empty, which tells you something. <laughs> the San Andreas Fault goes right through the middle of this area. So right there we've got two quite different areas within the same so-called sub-region. One side of Summit Road, if you will, is on the Pacific Plate. There's certain soil types associated with the Pacific Plate. The other side is the North American Plate. Different types of soils on the North American Plate. This is from the Miller Hill Vineyard, which as I mentioned is close to the winery. This vineyard is um, about 12 years old. Yeah, how long will it be before uh, one of the plates is on somebody else's property? <laughs> a long time. Hi, this, uh, this is a Pinot grown at Varia Vineyards on Pleasant Valley Road. This year, SoCal is, is doing its first estate grown wine. Today we have the 2005 Woodside Pinot Noir and the 2006. This comes from all from Woodside, town of Woodside. We, come, we source it from four different vineyards, all grown in the town of Woodside, our estate vineyards. The Walsh property, the, the, form, the late uh, Bill Walsh coach, uh, 49er coach. We also have the, the estate vineyard, and then two small vineyards that uh, are considered our estate that are around the corner from us that date back from the early 70s. We're a small estate vineyard uh, located in Woodside. Uh, small production, dry farm, hand maintained, hand harvested. A single acre on quadrilateral cordons. But one of the unusual things about our, our sites in Carlitos, I think, is just the even, consistent growing seasons. And uh, you get much less vintage to vintage variation. If I poured for you the Diane's block from 05 as an example, you'd say, oh yeah, I guess those are different wines, but they're pretty similar. <laughs> I mean, you know that there are slightly different vintages, but there's a lot of consistency. It's McHenry Vineyard, and it's in uh, the very top of Bonnie Dune Road, about 1,800 feet, sandy soil, facing the Pacific Ocean, south, and uh, it's always produced beautiful pinots. They collected grapes from across the street way back, right after Prohibition ended. The uh, researchers from uh, University of California, Davis, where I teach, um, uh, sampled there and realized that it was ideal for Pinot Noir way back in the 1930s, right after Prohibition. And um, so some s researchers were finding, trying to find the perfect place, and they spotted our place, and they talked my father into uh, planning Pinot Noir. So that's how we got started. We're actually pouring the 2007 Pinot Estate from Hunter Hill. It is a silver medal winner. And yesterday we did some barrel samples from the 08 coming out. It's going to be bottled in August and probably released in November. So we really think, according to what Christine Slater was saying, that uh, we really believe that the 08 will probably be better than the 07. This is our 07 Pinot Noir. Um, all the grapes came from the Coralitos area. Um, this particular wine had two different vineyards, uh, about five different clones. Uh, we just won a gold medal in the San Francisco Chronicle. And I just think the wine's very well balanced. Got nice fruit up front with a nice weight in the middle palate and balanced with a nice amount of oak, you know, about 25% new French oak. So. This spends this spends over two years on French oak. Uh -huh. So you can see the results of that right. oak that aging and that particular clone, you know, that comes from the Dijon clones. Right. Very nice. I'm going to make 350 cases of this one. I'm George with Algren Vineyards. Today we're pouring a 2007 Pinot from the Coralitos area. It's a vineyard, small vineyard that's located just above the Santa Cruz Fairgrounds in Watsonville. We've been in business since 1976. All our wines are handcrafted. We make about 2,000 cases a year. Today we were pouring two Pinots. One was from Brands of Forty Ridge. We poured out of that. And then we also had Alfaro family, which are grapes that we bought from Richard Alfaro, so we're lucky enough to be able to get some of his grapes. Our vineyard is dedicated to Rhone varietals, because that's what suited best for where we are in the Santa Cruz Mountains. We're right next to Big Basin Redwood State Park. And the vineyard that we have is, was a turn-of-the-century vineyard that was planted by a man from France named Jacques Lecru. And during Prohibition, it was closed down. But it was farmed for quite a while. And in 97, my husband was riding his mountain bike through the, through the hills there. And he found grape steaks. 
said, oh my gosh, this must have been a venue. And so we went and checked the county records, and it was. And he was able to buy it. And um, at that point, he started to put everything he had. He was working two jobs to get the vineyard going, and then he was able to put himself completely into it. And so the first vintage was in 2002. 06 Santa Cruz Mountain, and then I also have an 07 Santa Cruz Mountain. 07 Santa Cruz Mountain. The first wine we're pouring is our 06 Santa Cruz Mountain Pinot Noir, which is about 30% Saratoga. Uh, the remaining is Lester Family and Coralitas. Lots of earth, truffle, uh, black fruit. Drinking really well right now. Our second wine, is our 07 Santa Cruz Mountain Pinot. It's 100% Lester family. Look much brighter in the fruit, more red fruit. A little tight in the mid-mouth, but uh, just much brighter aromatically. A great vintage 07. We are pouring our 2006 uh, Pinot it's Noir. All it's all estate grown, a property just north of Scotts Valley. We have about six acres of vineyard planted, uh, representing five different Pinot Noir clones. And this is our second yeah, vintage that we are selling. Uh, we're a very small producer, only about uh, 500 cases of 06. And then our wine club members get invited to a special event up at the property, which was owned uh, back in the 40s by the famous director Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, and he owned it from 1940 to 1974, and reestablished vineyards himself uh, with some red variety I'm not sure of, and he had also Riesling uh, on the menu. I make wonderful wine chocolates as well as other kinds of chocolates, and we make them for different wineries, and we use their wine with our chocolate, and we put their logo on top of the chocolate when it's through. This is an assortment. All of them are excellent wines for champagne and we make them for them.